Now, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce the next speech to, given on behalf of Greens of Colour by Zaya Neal. If you look Zaya up, you'll find she has an incredible list of achievements as a Paralympian. And the kind of spirit and determination you need to go out time and again to win medals is something our party needs a lot more of. Now, Zai has this in spades. She brings real leadership to the party in pushing us not only on what we say, but on how we run our party and our processes internally. She's someone I've got to know over the past two years in London, and she's brought her talents to the process of making a manifesto for London. First, in a role of challenge and pushing for change as we put together our policies for the cancelled election for Mayor and Assembly in 2020. And then after that postponement, rethinking and redeveloping these policies for 2021 in the new light of the pandemic and in the risk of inequalities getting even worse if the voices of those most at risk were not included in how we run our city and our region. It was a real privilege to be challenged and to be a colleague of hers throughout that process. And our manifesto was immeasurably better as a result. I personally have learned a lot from Zai, and now you can too. It is my honour to introduce to you, her to you now conference. I give you Zai Neal. Welcome. Good afternoon, conference, and I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to speak to you today. For many of us, it wasn't an easy decision to come here in person. But to see so many of my Green Party colleagues here in Birmingham is a real pleasure. I was asked to deliver this speech in my capacity as a member of Greens of Colour, a group where I hold the position of disability officer. But that isn't my only role in the Green Party. I'm also convener of the disability group and I was elected earlier in the year as the role of Equalities and Diversity Coordinator on our executive. A role I share with my friend and colleague, Rashid Nix. And I'm giving you that list of roles because it represents a lot of what I want to talk to you about today. Seeing us all as the beautifully complex, multifaceted people that we are is what the party needs to help us engage, appeal, maintain, and get a truly diverse group of people elected and running this country. And I believe we can do this. So let me introduce myself properly for those who may not have heard my somewhat loud and sometimes contentious voice before. <laughs> I'm Zai Neal, a woman of African heritage, Algerian to be Pacific, a person of colour, disabled, a Paralympian, an activist, passionate about bringing social and just and climate action. For me, none of those things can be or should be addressed as standalone. Intersectionality is a word that gets thrown around a lot and it can seem niche and abstract, but what it really means is incredibly important, that we are more than the sum of our parts, that we are more complicated and more important than any label. That's the way we experience life is different depending on all the elements of what we are. I'm a person of colour, a woman, and I have a disability. So my experience of the world of discrimination in the world is different to many other people, even if they are of colour or a woman or disabled. 
The reality as a human being is that we shouldn't be reduced to tick boxes. I believe the Green Party can and should be a champion of those who suffer discrimination for whatever reason. That we have a responsibility to live up to our ideals of doing politics differently. I sometimes ruffle feathers in my roles because I don't hold back, but that's because I know that we can be to all those people out there who feel disenfranchised, who feel they are overlooked, who are put into boxes to be ticked, a place of belonging and understanding, but also a place of practical action that shows them, not just tells them, that they are valued. I hold this party to a high standard because I know we can reach it. I believe we are at a crucial moment of our future. We are pushing an open door, not only because of the realization of the climate emergency is now at our door, is widespread, but also because so many people have found themselves without a home politically in our unjust society. But just as we can't treat the attributes of individuals as if they are not connected, we must help people move away from the ideal that social and climate justice are not connected. To transform our society, into the one we want to live in, the one that thrives and provides for people in a way that is fair and decent, we have to tackle these crises hand in hand. Because the situation in our society is a crisis, take social care, we have a government unwilling to address the fact that the system is thoroughly broken, that millions of people in this country are being left without the basic support they need. And that scenario is only going to get worse. We are told there's no money to address this, but we know in reality, there just isn't the will. The pandemic has shown us that when the situation is one of life and death, the funding can be found. And that is where we find ourselves with social care, in a situation of life and death. I am one of the co-sponsors of a motion to this conference that clarifies and extends our party's policy on social care to offer a service that is fully funded, free at the point of use, and includes a universal legal right to independent living for all disabled people. <laughs> that is the kind of bold policy which makes a real difference in people's lives. That is the kind of social justice that the Green Party is all about. <laughs> but we can't be on the sidelines criticizing others also without looking internally at the things we as a party need to do better. When it comes to the diversity of our party, the membership, the communities we appeal to and operate in most frequently, we have a great deal more to do. We are a party that champions groups who face injustice and as such, we have to make sure 
we are representative. We have to make clear to communities from the global south and to those who don't feel heard by the current political system. They have a home with us. We can't focus our attention on rhetoric and grandstanding around equality and diversity and then do nothing behind the scenes. Our actions must be visible, practical and tangible. So what does it look like? One, it looks like proactive action to attract more people of colour as constituency candidates and councillors, to develop and motivate a diverse group to put themselves forward for elected positions within our party structure. We must use the DACA fund specifically set up for this function to make sure people of colour feel supported and comfortable in their roles, that they have an equal shot to run and win. <laughs> Two, it looks like doing more to push our social justice policies which could play a crucial role in supporting diverse and lower income communities. We must make ourselves more relatable and proactively reach out and into those communities and demonstrate what we have to offer. Three, it looks like making resources available to members on lower incomes at a local and regional level so that they can meaningfully contribute to Green Party events and activities. To champion digital inclusion so that how much money you have doesn't dictate whether you have your voice heard or not. <laughs> These are the things we could and should do as a party to de demonstrate practically our commitment to equality and diversity and our need to diverse to make clear and commitment to supporting those who need us most in their day-to-day -day lives and in the Green Party's journey. It's not restricted to people of colour. 15% of people in the world have a disability. 15%. The legacy of the Paralympics in Tokyo is that we are the 15 campaign designed to end discrimination worldwide against disabled people by 2030. It brings together the biggest coalition ever of international organisations from the world of sport, human rights, policy, communications, business, arts and entertainment. It is a global movement that is publicly campaigning for disability visibility, inclusion and accessibility. Campaigning groups like ours are our allies and we must be the practical voice face of this kind of ambition. In 1984, the Green Party was arguably still in its relatively infancy. It certainly did not have the scope and opportunity we now see in front of us. At the same time, some of you may know that I was a member of Team GB at Stoke Mandeville, the original... <laughs> the original home of the Paralympics. The first Games in 1948 were organised by a sports, a, a sports competition for British World War II veterans by Sir Ludwig Gutmann. It happened to be the grounds of Stoke Mandeville Hospital where he set up the first spinal injury unit. When I was a Paralympian, Papa Gutmann was my consultant. I'm giving my age away now. <laughs> Just to clarify, I wasn't there in 1948. <laughs> And he used to say, you have to pick up your life where you left it. He believed in the power of sport to change lives. 
Almost 40 years later, I was taking part alongside more than 200 athletes from 50 countries, and I went on to compete again in 2008 and qualify at top worlding ranking level in 2016. I'm telling you this, not because I want to show off about my medal halls in 1984. And by the way, it was two goals, two silvers. <laughs> and two bronzes. <laughs> plus a world record. <laughs> but because Gus Gutman was in the business of changing lives, and I really believe that we are too. The experience at the Games for me was so inspirational, so significant, that I was able to achieve so much gives me hope that working together as a team, we can too. I also take hope from others. You might have seen Adi Apatan, Nigerian-born Paralympic basket player, Turn TV presenter. In his series, which looks at different communities around the world for their solution to climate change, he is bringing questions and hopefully some answers into people's living rooms from his unique perspective. And I admire him for that. Conference, we still have far to go. Our party needs to be more representative more inclusive, more ambitious about representation and inclusion. At national, regional and local, we need to look what we can practically do to be done to promote equality and diversity. Not to just talk about it. We aren't there yet and this, on this journey, but we can get there. So let's leave the city heading out on a positive path and come back in six months, a year, 10 years, and celebrate our successes and how far we've come. Please do these four things for me, conference. Support our motion to further improve our offering on social care, including a universal legal right to independent living for all disabled people. Google hashtag we are the 15 and support their campaign. Watch Addy on the front line, Addy Apatan's TV programme on climate change, and go back to your regions and local parties and take practical steps to bring in more people of colour, more people from working class backgrounds, more disabled people, we must demonstrate that the Green Party is the place that welcomes people regardless of their background, then we'll be making progress. And lastly, conference, please enjoy your time here in Birmingham. Keep following the COVID precautions as we know we're not out of the woods yet and there is still risk. And while it's so fantastic to be here together, keep one, and else, uh, one another safe and well as to be our priority. We are Greens after all. Thank you.